Would you take out your engine if it was clogged? I mean, it's the same logic. Because it's clogged, we're going to take it out. Now, if you're in misery, pain, horrible pain, that's one thing. But without a gallbladder, you're not going to be able to absorb DEEK, EFAs, flavonoids, or carotenes as effectively. Same with the liver. 33% of Americans have fatty liver disease. Same with if you have Crohn's disease or irritable bowel syndrome or ulcerative colitis or any of these things. Pancreatic insufficiency. Or if you're diabetic, you're stressed out, have a stressed out pancreas. You can dose, unlike the hydrophilic nutrients, which you should be doing throughout the day, because remember, you're going to lose them and you're going to, you're going to be deficient or at least functionally deficient uh, by the end of the day. The EFAs and the fatty vitamins, those you can do once a day. They're stored. You can skip days. Those are stored. You don't need to spread them out as much. See how understanding this distinction is important. If you understood what we just talked about in these first two segments, you, you have, now have a powerful tool at your disposal that you didn't have before you started listening to this program about how to use your, your nutritional supplements. Your fatty ones you could use once a day. Your water-soluble ones you want to do them throughout the day. And this distinction is especially important in the world of skin care hydrophilic, water-loving, water-soluble nutrition or ingredients versus fat-loving, lipophilic ingredients in skincare products. I got an email today from a lady who wanted to know about a wrinkle cream that she read an ad for. It's called Valere. I don't like calling out companies, but this one needs calling out. Valere, V-A-L-A-R-E, or E-R-E maybe, Valere. I think it's V-A-L-E-R-E, wrinkle cream. Now, to a formulator like myself, you can immediately see it's a scam. But to the average person, it's got all the buzzwords, it's got all the marketing, it's diff much more difficult to see, especially if you don't know this distinction between hydrophilic and lipophilic. If you don't know this distinction, it becomes much more difficult to cut through the dishonesty, through the scammery in skincare, in everything really, but in skincare, uh, as we're discussing it now. That's because wrinkles are the observable effect, the visible effect of something that's happening deep in the skin, not the surface. We don't, and we're not told to, nobody teaches us, and, and commercials certainly aren't going to tell you, that there's a distinction, another distinction between the surface of the skin and the lower layers. This is another important distinction. The skin is made up of layers. The surface of the skin is distinct from the lower layers. The surface of the skin is dead. And that's where your Valeri is working. And any, uh, most skincare products are working. In order to get through to the lower layers, you've got to have clever formulations. You've got to know how to formulate in order to get to the lower layers of the skin. That's because the surface is fatty. The surface of our skin is lipophilic. The surface of our skin is, is basically covered with a coating of oil an oil-soluble material. That makes perfect sense when you think of the fact that we're 60 to 70 percent water or more in some places. How can we, that's an amazing idea by the way, how can we possibly be two-thirds or more water? We're like puddles sloshing about. How could this even possibly be? You know why? It's really cool why. And think about it. How is it that water can somehow form a solid body? That's some amazing stuff. Two-thirds water, one-third uh, fat. That's basically what we are. How does that form a solid body? Well, it's really interesting. I'll, talk, I'll tell you what that is when we come back from our break, and, uh, and then we'll take your phone calls as well. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. So if you're on hold, hang tight. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, skin care, or if you uh, want to contribute to the conversation or have a success story, 844-236-6010 is our number. All right, so a couple things I want to just finish up here. I know I always leave things hanging and I try not to, but in, the, in uh, the interest of tying up all our loose ends before we get to our calls, uh, before we went to break, we were talking about how the body is 60 to 70% water, yet we're solid somehow, right? It doesn't look like we're water, but we're two-thirds water. That's pretty amazing. So what, how, what is it that accounts for that? Well, what accounts for it is the kind of water that we're made up, with, made up of. We're not made up of the same kind of water. Water is not water is not water. You know, like a rose is a rose is a rose. That's not true with water. For a long time, we thought that. But biological water is different from ordinary water. That's why you don't get fix your dry skin by drinking more water. Because the water in your skin is a special kind of water. The water in your body is a special kind of water. It's called bound water or clustered 
water. This is the water that's inside a cell. The water inside a cell or also inside connective tissue has a certain magnetic nature that allows it to stick, to stick together. It's sticky water. Yes, sticky water. It's kind of like solid water in a way. How cool is that? We're made up not of water, but of solid water. Water that has an electrical nature that is different from the electrical nature of ordinary water. I'm not going to get into the chemistry of it, but it's pretty darn cool. It's called bound water or solid water or sticky water. And that's why we're not puddles sloshing about even though we're two-thirds water. Now, as far as wrinkles go, as far as this Valeri wrinkle cream goes, if you understand the distinction between fat-soluble and water-soluble, you understand that fat-soluble activities, building activity, or fat-soluble activities are building activities. They're the kind of activities that require time, require building. A wrinkle cream takes time to work. It will not work instantly like Valeri says it works. You can immediately tell it's a scam because they tell you you're going to get instant results. You can't get instant results from a wrinkle product because it takes time for fat-soluble material to make their way down to the cells. You, they're migrating downwards through the layers, and it takes time for them to initiate the building activity. Wrinkle formation is in the lower levels of the skin. To take care of wrinkles, you need to have ingredients that migrate down. You have to have ingredients that will be used by the, the wrinkle fiber making cells or the anti-wrinkle fiber making cells. And all of this takes days or weeks or months. And usually the, the good results, if you have a really good skincare product, you're going to notice that your results get better and better over time. You're going to notice that you got really good results in a couple of days or a week or so. You're going to notice that you get amazing results in a month. And you're going to notice that as the months go by, your skin looks better and better. That's how you know you have a quality product. You can get some quick instant results, but those instant results are basically going to be softening. If you have a really cleverly designed product, you can get instant results that affect the circulation of the skin, and that's a good thing, but you're not going to get anti-wrinkle benefits until days and weeks and even months have progressed. If a company is selling you a product that says instant wrinkle reduction, you know you got a scam because you can't reduce wrinkles instantly because it takes time. All right, so, so much more to talk about here. Uh, let's see. Got a couple of cool studies I want to tell you about. We'll tell you about that when we come back uh, from our next break. Let's hit our phones. 844-236-6010 is our number. How about we go to Grace in Miami Beach. Greetings, Grace. What's going on? Good morning, I'm Mrs. Ben. Yes, ma'am. How you doing? Fine. How you doing? I'm doing good. I have a question regarding hearing loss. Um, I noticed like two to three weeks ago, my left ear um, is like a, like a, it's not a hum, but it's like a, almost like a white noise started yeah, in my yeah. left ear. Yeah, yeah. That's very common. Tinnitus, it's called. Uh, how is old are you, Grace? Tinnitus? Yeah, that sounds like tinnitus. It's a little early for tinnitus to show up in a degenerative sense. Got diabetes or any blood sugar issues or any other health stuff going on? <laughs> No, not that I'm aware of. I'm not on any kind of medication. Not on any medicine? I, no. All right, well, something's, something's going on. That's a sign the body's breaking down. That's an okay. inflammatory condition. Tinnitus, by the way, for everybody out there, and it's a big problem, and doctors tell you they're mystified. They don't know what causes it. It's nothing more than the same thing that causes everything else. It's inflammation and a breakdown of the, uh, breakdown of the tissue in the body. Probably, probably involves uh, inflammation of tissue that's now break, causing a problem with the nerves, an inflammatory condition that's affecting the nerves. Hearing is a nervous issue. It's a nerve issue. It's a neurological issue. How we hear is an, just another one of the most amazing things, in the, another one of the incredible ways the body does its business. Sound waves are turned into electrical energy. That electrical energy is then turned into chemical energy. That chemical energy is then turned into electrical energy, and you hear a sound. And all that occurs instantaneously, and it requires a lot of chemistry. It requires a lot of stuff. I mean, we take it for granted, but there's a lot of stuff going on when you hear something. If those nerves are stimulated from something that's not airwaves coming out of somebody's vocal cord, does that make sense? If those nerves are just being stimulated for some other reason that's not pressure, air pressure waves coming out of my voice, out of my vocal cords, you're going to hear a sound. You follow? 
the nerves in there that are responsive to pressure from typically air pressure from a voice or a sound are now responding inappropriately. There's something that's causing them to respond. That means there's a pressure in there. That means there's an artificial pressure, not a voice pressure, which is the, what it's supposed to be perceiving, but a, a pushing pressure. I call that inflammation. Okay? You got an inflammatory condition in that, neuro, that area that's processing sound. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, if you had that inflammation in your joints, you'd say it was arthritis. If you had that inflammation in your brain, you'd say it was Alzheimer's disease. If you had that inflammation in your big toe, you'd call it neuropathy. If you had that inflammation in your, uh, uh, in your skin, you'd call it eczema. If you had that inflammation anywhere, you'd go to a specialist to handle that inflammation. You don't need a specialist. It's inflammation. You follow me? Yes. It's micro-inflammation, however, not the kind of inflammation that's in your eye when you get punched in the eye or what was in your knee when you sprain your knee. It's microscopic inflammation. It's the kind of inflammation you don't see. So the way you deal with it is the way you deal with all inflammatory issues, which you might as well say is all health challenges, and that's number one, clean the blood. Figure out what is inflam it's what's getting into the system that's causing that inflammation, and that means food. That means you always focus on food first and digestion. And you know how to do that, I'm sure, because we talk about it every day. Second thing you're going to want to do is stabilize the blood sugar. That's why I asked you if you're a diabetic. Diabetes and tinnitus go hand in hand because sugar represents a blood toxin after a certain amount. And that will initiate an inflammatory response. So do all your sugar stuff. Restrict your intake of sugars. Uh, and then use sugar metabolizing nutrients, chromium, vanadium, the B vitamins, all the ones we talked about. Then, thirdly... And you want to make sure that you're calming the body down because under conditions of stress, inflammation, it'll be much harder to uh, reduce inflammation. Under conditions of hypoxia, low oxygen, and there's a very important relationship between stress and low oxygen. Do you know your thyroid gland is one of, it, it may be the major regulator of your, of, your respi of your respiration. And it's a big circle because not only does your thyroid regulate respiration, but respiration regulates your thyroid. It's a big circle. So working on the adrenal thyroid complex by calming the body down, using uh, 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 deep breathing techniques, making sure you're oxygenating. And then for tinnitus, because of the electrical nature of the, uh, uh, the electrical nature of perception of the, the ear, of the hearing sense, use your electrical nutrients and lots of them, the B-complex. Beyond Tangy Tangerine, zinc, 50 milligrams a day, must have for all tinnitus sufferers. Hang on, Grace. I'll finish up when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Grace in Miami Beach. Grace, you there? Yes, I am. So did, I, did everything I say make sense? So far? Yes. Um, here, here, let me just say one last thing. One okay. last thing, one last thing. You got to look for other things going on. And nobody just has tinnitus. Tinnitus is associated with bodily breakdown and will show up in other parts of the body. And in order to really pin it down, you got to look for other symptoms. Nobody, nobody, nobody just has tinnitus. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, that's okay. Um, so then the, the hearing loss is, you know, if I'm... Of course, make my diet better because I know it's not as good as it should be. Um, would that hearing come back? Yes, absolutely. Okay, now, okay. I, now, I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. I don't know the significance of the damage, so it may be that the damage there's some kind of damage that will take too long for it to recover, for it to repair itself, and you may only have 30 years left or 40 years left. It may take 50 years, but you can turn it around. Whether you have a complete recovery or not, I can't say because I don't know how, how, perm how, uh, how much damage is there. But it can reverse itself. Absolutely, yes. It's an inflammatory condition. The infl inflammation will go down. The body repairs itself. Cells turn over. It's part of the nature. It's, part of, it, it's in the body's nature to repair. So, yes, it can begin to reverse. Perfect. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Okay, thank good you. deal. Good to talk to you, Grace. Thank you. Thank okay, eight four four two three six sixty ten. By the way, the, uh, one of the causes of tinnitus is, or one of the, uh, I don't want to say causes of tinnitus, but one of the uh, diseases, so-called disorders that's associated with uh, tinnitus is called Meniere's disease. So some of you guys may have heard of it. Meniere's disease is the is the colloquial name, but the real name for Meniere's disease is idiopathic endolymphatic high drops. Yes, that's right. That's Meniere's disease, idiopathic endolymphatic hydros. What that basically means is you got poison in your lymph, and we don't know why. 
you know, you are, or basically you got an ear, a hearing problem po uh, caused by a dirty lymph, endolymphatic, and we don't know why, idiopathic. Basically what they're telling you is it's an inflammatory condition, Meniere's disease, and they don't know what's causing it. Well, I'm telling you what's causing it. Something's getting in the blood. Something's getting